Now let's do the opposite and change from exponential to radical form. So we see in part A, the quantity that's being raised to a power is x squared plus y squared. So that doesn't change. The denominator is always the index of my root. So this is going to be square root. And the numerator of my exponent is always the power. So that'll be cubed. In part B, we have two things going on with power. So let's focus on them one at a time. So the two is not being raised to a power. So it stays my coefficient. But the y is the denominator is the index of my root. So that means this is going to be the fourth root of y. The numerator of my exponent is my power. That's going to be cubed. We also have z. Once again, the denominator is the index of the root. And since we're raising it to a numerator of 1, that's the first power, we don't really need to write anything there. So now in part C, we have a negative exponent. So that's the same as 1 over a to the 3 over 2. Now, since we have this in our denominator, we have an excluded, excluded value. We know that our denominator can never equal 0. Therefore, a cannot equal 0. So we have to state that whenever we have um, something in our denominator. So now I can rewrite this. I have 1 over a. Now, my denominator is the index of my root. So it's square root. And the numerator of my exponent is the power. So remember, we have to keep this excluded value as part of our answer. And this is our simplified answer. Now in part D, we have a decimal. But remember, a decimal is a fraction. Um, this is x to the 2 tenths. If I simplify that, that's x to the 1 fifth. So now that I have it as a simplified fraction, my denominator of my power is the index of my root. And this would be my simplified answer.